Okay, so let's go for the acute respiratory distress syndrome. So ARDS. And what is that? So it's acute. It's a really acute respiratory failure. Okay. So it's acute respiratory failure. If we'll, if I will write in here. Failure. Which is, and this is crucial, it's refractory to oxygenation. Okay. So it's really hard to, to normalize the levels of oxygen in the blood. So it's a refractory hypoxemia. Okay, that's crucial. So it's a acute problem with lungs that they are failing in their function. And basically what you should imagine is someone on ventilator immediately. They will come to you. You will see how severely they're dyspneic. They're using all their muscles. They're not able to, you know, they can be in a tripod position and they, they are trying so hard to survive with breathing. Okay, so this is what you should imagine. Okay, so any movie where someone is, you know, trying to catch up the, the air, they pretty much look like this. Okay, so it's acute respiratory failure with refractory hypoxemia, so the Terry hypoxemia. But watch out, there are many other things you have to watch for. So first of all, guess what? And I always love to repeat it over here for all the Berliners in the crowd, you should remember, first of all, that the PF ratio, the Horowitz index, has to be definitely below 300, okay? So that's one of the things that you have to fulfill, that the PF ratio is under 300, and it's refractory hypoxemia. And I will give you now three more things you have to fulfill, but all these four things work together, and especially the Horowitz index was used to define the seriousness of the ARDS, and this happened in Berlin. I think like, well, I don't know, 10 years ago, I don't know when, doesn't matter, but it's called the Berlin score, okay? So remember, Germany and Berlin score, it's a clinical scoring, okay? And as I told you, ARDS is very lethal, and in general, 30 till 40% of people will die, okay? But with the Berlin score, there are three levels of seriousness, okay? So first one is a mild ARDS. And the mild ARDS is when the lowest as he goes with the Horowitz index is below 300, but above 200. So somewhere between two and 300, okay? So it is able for the whole time keep within this range, his probability that he's going to die is 25%. 25%, okay? Yeah? Good. But typically, many of them, they start with, uh, I don't know, 250 out of it, but then they go deeper and deeper as the, as the disease progresses, okay? So then they will get to the moderate ARDS, And the moderate, it's like 100 till 200. And over here, the probability is 35%. About. And right. if they worsen even more, severe ARDS is below 100. Okay? So although you give oxygen or not, it doesn't matter because you, you have the Horowitz index. Okay? So, and... and the Horvitz index tells you about the function of the lungs, how well they are able to oxygenate the, the blood, okay? Because, of course, you're cheating with the oxygen and you're helping him with the oxygen. Yeah, it's going to get higher because you give more. But if you would turn the patient off, if you would stop the O2, he would immediately die because he wouldn't be able to survive with such a bad function of the lungs, okay? 
So first of all, refractory, refractory hypoxemia, that's crucial, okay? What's the second thing? Well, of course, what's there? What you should imagine? Well, actually, what happens during the ARDS, it's a, it's a massive edema, bilateral. So the thing what you should typically see, and we're going to come there, on x-ray, that's the third thing, but uh, like in general, you should remember there is a reduced compliance of the lungs. That's why the hypoxemia is also refractory because you are having, you know what? Acute restrictive disease, okay? Especially when it worsens because both lungs bilaterally are very edematous, so you have a bilateral edema, okay? So suddenly it's very acute, and watch out, in lungs, acute means minutes, but in case of ARDS, it means rather hours, like at least six hours or even two, three days. So within lungs, of course, we got diseases or, or causes which are very fast, like, I mean, if someone strangles you, obviously that's very fast, but with the ARDS, you should rather imagine it takes days that, that, it, it, that it is fully developed, okay? So it has different phases, and at the beginning, for example, the patient is rather, he can hyperventilate, whatever, and as it gets worse, he's getting into a global respiratory failure, okay? That means like on a second or third day. And then, then it's become very, very serious, okay? But you should now imagine that the lungs are full of water. The interstitium is full of water at the beginning. Later, alveoli, of course, are full of water. And not only water, but many other stuff from the blood. The compliance is really reduced. They're very stiff, okay? And what correlates with this? Well, of course, the x-ray. So the thing you see on x-ray is a diffuse ground glass appearance, remember that. It's like a milky glass, what you see, okay? So if you do an x-ray, normally you, the lungs look black on x-ray, but over here, because they are so edematous, they're like milky. And the crucial thing is it's diffuse. It's like really, it, I mean, both lungs diffusely are have this ground glass appearance, okay? So I'll write it down. So x-ray, what you see is a diffuse ground glass appearance. And that's a term you use in, of the lungs, of the lungs. Normally you use it in the, so the opacity really is seen and crucial thing is typically both lungs, okay? So this should be white. This is a negative, okay? So it's black, but both lungs are like whitish, milky. In contrast to this, for example, if you have pneumonia, you would see that like lower, whatever, there's one, just one part, that's pneumonia, okay? But this is typically ARDS. But watch out also, Pneumonia later can turn into ARDS, okay? But rather ARDS, imagine both lungs are severely impacted. It doesn't have to be 100% of the space, but very near, like full impact. So one, two, three. Horowitz, of course, you should imagine decreased compliance. And then if you do the x-ray, which you do always, you know, x-ray for lungs is an ECG for heart. That's just the same. But fourth thing, and that this is crucial, please, all of you. The edema you see over there is non-cardiogenic, okay? It's non-cardiogenic. That's so important. So basically, you have to rule out that the edema would be due to failing left heart, okay? So crucial thing, non cardiogenic edema. So that the cause is within the lungs, not after the lungs, but within the lungs. 
okay? Yeah. And of course, that's what you're going to rule out because the if you have edema due to left heart failure, it looks very similar or yeah, it looks very similar to to the ARDS on x-ray, okay? Because again, there is a diffuse edema of both lungs, okay? So remember, but this one is non-cardiogenic, okay? And how you can rule that out? Well, of course, you can do ultrasound and you check the heart, so heart ultrasound, or better, they wanna use the term echo, but it's just the same. There's bit, some differences, but it's ultrasound, nothing else. You can take BNP, and remember, BNP really helps you in ruling out the failing heart. Okay, so if you take BNP and it's not increased, you know, it's rather that the, the heart is okay. Or in case someone has still the PCWP, the VEG pressure, if someone would have the, this catheter, but uh, I mean, we're using it less and less and less because, you know, it's invasion, but anyways... PCWP, so the VEG pressure should be below 18, remember. It should be below 18 millimeters of mercury, okay? So the pressure in atrium shouldn't be higher. If it would be 30, yeah, that could be a, that, that would be a failing left heart. But anyways, remember, I have to rule out the cardiogenic edema, and that's it. So four things to remember, Horowitz, compliance decrease, x-ray, they will be diffusely impacted, and of course that the heart is okay. So this is definition. So it's acute respiratory failure with the refractory hypoxemia. There's a decreased compliance. The Horowitz is below 300, definitely, and it's non-cardiogenic edema. And Let's get to the pathogenesis, or let's get to causes. And please, ARDS, it's a syndrome. That's important. So it's a syndrome. That's why there are many, 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 many causes. Okay? And I'm going to divide them now. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always... Check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.